Hi everyone, my name is Richard Elberger. I'm from Amazon Web Services and I'm super excited to be able to speak to you today about Amazon Web Services and the Yocto project. A bit about the journey, uh, how we got there, uh, the things that we do with regards to Yocto project and so forth. So why don't we just get started? So about me, I've been with Amazon a bit more than seven years. More than five years of that time, I've been doing working with customers and with partners regarding Amazon's uh, Amazon Web Services device software integration with embedded Linux. And from that, the Meta AWS project was developed. Um, and we worked with partners to get those integrated into their SDKs. And from there, it just grew and into a solid project and we have a team supporting that now. So I lead that team at Amazon Web Services and I still do evangelism work. So a lot of other talks around embedded Linux, automotive grade Linux, uh, security provisioning and so forth. And um, you can contact me on my LinkedIn there. Let's get started with why we're actually sponsoring Yocto Project and also Automotive Grade Linux, which is really what I consider a sister project to Yocto Project. So when I first started working with Yocto Project, I found that many customers were using it in anger uh, to develop their products. And I felt that we just needed a tighter working relationship with the Yocto Project from both understanding where the Yocto project is going, uh, keeping up to date and so forth, but also being able to provide things back to the Yocto project in terms of evangelism, helping customers build on the AWS cloud, and also where we can contribute to back to the Yocto project. I think you may have learned a little bit about that with Thomas Rue's talk um, during the same summit. So it's been uh, really great. We, we started off with the Platinum membership and we did the same for automotive grade Linux. And in doing so, we were able to assert how important we feel the Yocto project is to our customers who are building products using microprocessor profile uh, um, processors um, to deliver their products. So, in doing that, we are actually we actually took a bigger picture view. Um, it's not just about getting the software onto the root file system, getting it configured so it can run out of the box, or helping customers integrate the SDKs or anything else into their applications. But we also found that there were other areas that Amazon Web Services could help customers accelerate their delivery of their Yocto project custom distri based distri um, custom distribution and also maintain that over its lifetime, lifetime just because of the sheer scale and the ability to globally distribute works across the world where workers are now distributed across the world so and customers are distributed across the world so especially in the IoT we found out it's really important to have a much wider view, not just specifically saying, hey, let's install a particular software package. We really wanted to extend that out. And that's what I'm going to be talking about throughout this talk is how we help customers evaluate, integrate, deliver, and maintain embedded Linux distributions that are built with the Yocto project. <clears throat> so how I like to discuss the recipes that we're providing in Meta AWS that helps our customers deliver AWS device software to their custom Linux distributions is by putting them roughly into three basic categories. The first category is software development kits, where customers will take the APIs and integrate those into their applications. And there's a couple of approaches that customers can take to make that happen. And I'll discuss that later in the deck. But really, if you're building an application that is uh, working with the AWS cloud, especially with AWS IoT, 
This makes it really easy for you to use those APIs and integrate them in your applications. If you're, uh, what you can also do is leverage device software such as AWS IoT Greengrass and AWS Firecracker, which we have recipes for. And this is really a whole, uh, a whole middle, middleware system or a micro VM management system that allows you to better uh, componentize your applications and more fluidly distribute those applications on edge devices that connect to the AWS cloud. So I'll talk about that a little bit later as well in more detail. And then finally, is um, there's the edge agents. So there are agents that run as daemon processes on the device that connect with special services that we have in the AWS cloud. It could be AWS IoT Core, it could be AWS IoT Fleetwise, it could be Amazon EC2 um, systems management service, uh, which I'll get into later. And those are all services, uh, daemon processes that you can run on your device. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what we found early on in 2021 is because so many customers started using Meta AWS, really in the beginning, it was me that was, um, I was working on the project and it wasn't really full time and all the recipes were manually curated. I would go in and manually upgrade the recipes myself and manually test those recipes myself. And it really was, wasn't was really a scalable solution. And the quality assurance, of course, whenever you're doing manual testing or manual inspection, it's not, you don't have consistent outcomes. So we found we wanted to put a really big focus on quality assurance, not in lesser focus on getting more and more recipes developed and put out into the layer. So <clears throat> one of the challenges that we had early on was with the SDKs. There's so many repositories that contribute to the SDK, keeping those automatically upgraded, um, up to date on either the mainline or the LTS branches became very, very time consuming. So we spent a lot of time on ensuring that we could autom automate the upgrade process and also automatically build test those packages. And what was really, a, really a key aspect of this was for us is that we wanted to ensure that if a single recipe was modified that we only build test that particular recipe so we're not building or rebuilding the entire layer. And that's more of a realistic situation for customers as well. They're not going to install everything that comes in the layer. So we actually completed that work earlier this year. And in so doing, we also were able to ensure <clears throat> to, to ensure that we kept those packages all up to date and that we had automated processes in place to propagate recipes to LTS branches so our customers could take advantage of upgraded libraries there as well. Now, what we also started about three or four months ago was automated p-testing. So we found that p-testing was super important. It's um, I know that it's a bit of a challenge for the project as a whole to put uh, to enable p tests in every single package, but we feel very strong about enabling every single one of our packages for p test and then automatically running p test against Kimu images. And later we'll use emulation for um, emulating real processors. So. In, in doing that, we'll be able to get automated feedback, not just for what Meta AWS produces, but also for what um, for the software packages that we're building. So if we're finding that there's unit test challenges in particular upstream packages that are developed or led um, from an open source perspective from other teams across AWS or Amazon, that we were able to feedback those challenges back into those teams so they could support the customers faster and deliver higher quality software to our customers. 
Now, the next step after that, I just wanted to give you some uh, foresight into what's coming next after this, because the package unit testing should be uh, wrapped up in the next two to three months, is full integration testing. So the challenge with the integration testing, of course, is that we need to have representative um, refer uh, representative reference distributions, like what um, what a greenfield um, abstract security camera would look like or what um, a telematics box would look like, any of those types of typical use cases. So what we want to do is not create distributions, but uh, create like a reference, um, a reference construct. So for example, if it's a security camera, we want to ensure that when we're building and testing Kinesis video streams, that we're able to do the integration testing with the services themselves and uh, deliver those results publicly. So you have a strong indication as to how viable or how, um, how well that the software packages are doing. So you can have a higher degree of confidence about building that software into your own products. So first let's get into evaluating because everyone starts off with development in development with evaluating software. And many times, you know, it can be a little bit challenging to do that um, with the Octo project. Um, if you're just starting out because there's a bit of a learning curve, but we want to make it as easy as possible with same default options. So customers could just add a recipe to their local.conf or to their custom distribution configuration and get the software built in to the root file system, bring up uh, an evaluation board and then be able to test against that or add their custom software or do some basic integrations, um, really, really basic integrations in the early stages to test out the capabilities, not with the device, not only with the device software, but also with the integration with the AWS cloud. So we wanted to make that really, really easy. And I hope that we're continuously improving that so customers have a better experience doing that. So the first part is the software development kits. There's really three kinds of S, um, SDKs. Um, that we're providing here. One isn't really an SD, it isn't an SDK. It's the, Joff, it's the JDK. So it, Amazon provides a long-term service Java development kit named Amazon Coretto, and you're, we support a few different versions of that. And you can choose the recipe that you want if you're building Java applications into your embedded device. But um, the other SDKs, such as the Kinesis Video Streams Producer SDK, the Device SDKs, which are uh, really important for working with AWS IoT, most customers in production will use uh, C++ for that, but many start off with Python. The APIs themselves are very similar, um, but uh, of course the languages are different. So, but at least with the Python SDK, you can get started quickly. Now, if you need to work with more services beyond AWS IoT, then you would want to use the AWS SDK. And, we've, and right now, Meta AWS provides the C++, when in the future we have plans. But again, I want to circle back that the focus right now is on the quality assurance, right? So we're putting all of our energy into that. But if you have a need for another language for the AWS Software Development Kit, which covers all of the, um, the control plane for all of the services at AWS, then just let us know through GitHub or whatnot. And I have a link to that later on, so you can make that request if you desire additional languages. <coughs> Excuse me. So about middleware. So middleware does take a little bit more work than putting on an SDK. The SDK you can, in the previous slide, what I didn't mention is that generally when people get started, they uh, simply compile the shared libraries and then do some lightweight integrations, API integrations. That may not be the course that they go on, go to later on, which I'll discuss later. But with middleware, it's a, 
it's really a different bag. It's uh, it's a like a platform where you install the software. There's a management layer. There are uh, very strictly defined constructs on how that software runs and operates and how you develop software for that. Uh, we do provide Greengrass uh, today. We Actually, Greengrass was the first recipe. AWS IoT Greengrass was the first recipe that was provided in Meta AWS years ago. And um, but now we are focused on AWS IoT Greengrass version two, which is uh, Java based and just the nucleus and supporting um, containers are Java based. You can develop your custom uh, components for Greengrass and other languages as well. But this um, for evaluating, we install the binary um, from the GitHub repository release that Greengrass provides. Uh, to simply get that set up right on your daemon process and you can start developing right away on your own workstation using the Greengrass development kit to develop components and get them shifted over to your EVB, your evaluation board, so you can start seeing how Greengrass is working and how you can integrate your applications with that, which is the next step. Firecracker is another um, area that is, is generating, has been generating a lot of excitement. Um, it provides a compute manager effectively where you can run micro VMs. And this is the underlying technology for AWS Lambda, which is a hugely popular serverless uh, service, which is in the AWS cloud. So it's the same underlying software that, that manages the compute aspect of it. And you can actually run this on your device and provide micro VMs that run under that context. So we provide the recipes for Firecracker as well. Again, this is just the management layer and you do have to distribute the micro VMs that you build um, yourself to the device. So the last category is the device edge agents. Uh, we do provide a few more that are listed here, lesser used ones, but the, the one that we provide first was um, is AWS IoT Device Client, which showcases all of the services that AWS IoT provides, um, job management, fleet management, telematics, all that sort of stuff. And um, what's really, really great is that out of the box in the recipe, it runs under systemd and it just hums along. And you just have to do some minor configuration in order to do like your application specific telematics or whatnot. So uh, this is a really easy way to get started um, integrating uh, with the AWS, with AWS IoT Core to send telematics. Like if you're just doing some basic sensor readings or whatnot, it's a great way to get started. The AWS IoT Fleetwise Edge Agent was just recently released, um, and that provides direct um, direct integration with the AWS IoT Fleetwise service, which was launched just a month or two ago. And um, it's really a rich telematics system for automotive and for the agent on the device side. There's many ways that you could um, deploy that. Um, from a high level perspective on an automotive gateway. But effectively, this agent can either run directly on um, the base system itself or in a VM or, or in a container uh, in order to um, integrate with AWS IoT FluWise. And then the last is this, this last one here, the SSN agent. Uh, customers that are running embed devices in an enterprise context use this, um, strictly use this. This is a, I wouldn't say it's a, a general agent that's used by customers for IoT products that customers purchase and put in their homes or whatever. Um, but this is really, um, this is really more focused for customers that are running uh, devices within their own enterprise infrastructures. And then that way they can work with SSM on the backhaul, like a private backhaul back to AWS. And so it's a, it's a great agent, easy to install, um, runs under system D and like everything else here that I've shown so far, the, so far the source code is available. We build that from source. 
So integrating is the next step uh, after you've done the evaluation and you feel great about the software, the device software that you want to use for your specific use case. Like if you have a brown field app or if you have a green field app, it really depends. Um, there's just a, such a wide variety of use cases that that software can be integrated to. Um, the next step is really integrating. And I, I really just don't have enough time to go into all the details of integrating software, but I'll give you some idea about uh, how customers take the software and use it um, or uh, use it in their specific cases, like what the next step is. So I left Coretto off here because Coretto is actually a binary distribution um, Java development kit. So it's not, you don't really integrate it with anything, um, but these other SDKs you do. Right. So these SDKs uh, use, they're all, um, they all use C++ under the covers where it's using the common runtime. So they're, um, well, the KVS one doesn't, but the, the device SDK for C++, Python, and also the AWS SDK for C++, they all use a common runtime, which is C++. But the, the thing is that, um, when you're developing your embedded application, you may want to also statically compile these uh, or statically link these to your applications. So earlier this year, I know that um, in the past we were solely focused on share libraries, but we heard our customers, they, um, they said that we want to statically link our applications. Actually also Dennis from um, Consulco also said that he needed to do that for customers. So what we did is that we fixed that. And earlier this year, we provide the capability to also statically link that work to your application. So that in doing so, um, we also, there's a separate part that we really focused on uh, getting fixed for customers was getting those uh, SDKs usable in the context of Yocto SDK and eSDK. We found that was super important. So, um, so developers could locally compile their applications, compile and link their applications in an SDK context, the Yocto SDK context, and then get those bits transferred over to the device under, to te under test. So we put a lot of focus on that, and that really eases the integration part with these SDKs. Integrating with uh, device middleware is uh, is a much, uh, I would say, longer task. Like Greengrass uh, is is middleware that's more tightly coupled with the AWS cloud. It provides uh, the capability to dynamically update software onto the device. You have to use a volatile file system and all that kind of stuff in order for it to work work effectively. And um, so you have to you have to integrate your development processes with the cloud, so you can deliver from the cloud and that sort of thing. And the same thing would go for Firecracker, because ultimately you'll want to <coughs> be able to um, deliver those things from the cloud as well. So a lot of the focus for integrating on the middleware side is encapsulating your code into the constructs, either it's a micro VM or it's a green grass component, um, ensuring that communication pathways are working properly, especially with green grass, with the inner process call mechanism, mechanisms, and then getting the workflow facilitated via the cloud. So that's most of the integration work that happens from a middleware perspective. And then finally, there's integrating device edge agents. There's really not much to do here, right? These are just agents that built, they run under system D on your device and um, they can come as is. But with AWS IoT device client, there's a lot of features and you're able to tune those features to turn them on and off using package configs. So we did that work within the recipe. So customers can just like say, oh, I just wanna do telematics. I don't wanna do fleet management or even vice versa. Also with device client, this is really um, a representative app on how to use the SDKs, the device SDKs. So you can even lift and shift that code from the device client into your own app to accelerate your delivery. <clears throat> so the next couple of sections 
is it's areas that I've been talking about for the last couple of years with customers, probably three years with customers, about doing continuous integration and continuous delivery through the AWS cloud. So I'm just going to be a little bit lightweight here because uh, we don't have the time to go through all the details today. But uh, I want to give you some indication about how you can take advantage of the scale of the cloud, only pay for what you use, uh, in order to deliver your embedded Linux distributions from the AWS cloud. So the first part is enabling p-test and hardware and loop testing from the cloud perspective. Um, when when you're when you're building cloud up in the cloud using code build, you can use a really high octane uh, system with say 84 cores to build your distribution. Um, Usually what we see is the time it takes to build a distribution from scratch up in the AWS cloud using that is, it's like a factor of 10 um, faster than what we see on-prem. So uh, in data centers, on local data centers. <clears throat> and when you're able to do that, you're able to save a lot of time. So you're able to deliver faster, but it's not just that, you're able to actually deliver it cheaper, cheaper than actually housing your own infrastructure um, in a data center with all the ancillary costs, management costs, and so forth. So, um, and you only pay for what you use. So once you do a build, then that compute's automatically turned off. So with hardware and loop testing, you can automatically distribute that to S3 after it's built. This is something that comes with, it's a automatic function with code build. And then use a system called uh, Storage Gateway to distribute that to any number of endpoints or testing centers that you may have. And that transparently enables you to shift distributions down to the edge and then use local file gateways, which could be, uh, which is, a, is something that AWS provides to you as part of the AWS Storage Gateway service. And you can communicate to that over NFS or SIFS and to facilitate your testing. And that will actually improve or accelerate the transfer of the assets from the cloud down to the edge for your, for your hardware and loop testing. And then once you do that, you can uh, use a, different, a couple of different triggering mechanisms to actually run, to invoke the test after the transfer completes down to the, uh, down to the edge. And and then you can use any testing framework that you that you wish to from that point. So there's a few out there. I don't want to name drop specifics, but they're they all once the image is down on the edge and you're able to invoke the client to do something, then you're able to execute your your P tests. So the next part is about building custom distributions. Uh, I wish I could go through all this in detail. It's so much fun. But you know that when you're doing a distribution, you're having source code come from a lot of different areas. Um, when you're building the distribution itself from the, and reflecting what your PCB design looks like, system engineers, software engineers, QA engineers all provide information to your application and then you want to automatically build that and distribute that so the first one is your production image you want to get that down to the edge so you can do um, either use the image on your evbs just to see how it works or you can use um, it for p-tests or transfer sdks down to the edge to your on-prem but once you get to the point where you're releasing then you want to automatically distribute that to cloudfront CloudFront gives you multiple points of presence globally. So customers, either if it's your contract manufacturer who's going to be placing the image on, on your boards during the manufacturing process, or if you're doing system updates for your customers, which I'll get into in the next section, that can really accelerate the distribution of your updates globally. So once you put into S3, that's, which is a global service, the simple storage service is a global service, you can actually light up endpoints around the world where you want them, that, where they're close to your customers. So that can really accelerate the way that you distribute your, ma your maintenance images. All right. Great. So. Uh
this is more on maintaining and this is something that's really interesting I wanted to let you know about <clears throat> about this uh, how to do you're probably familiar already what over-the-air updates is but what actually triggers an over-the-air update so there's actually two kinds of OTAs that we see our customers doing one is actually for machine learning so either you're uh, using the um, the compute based inference or are you doing inferencing against a DSP or an FPGA or a GPU it doesn't really matter but you need to continuously improve that model you want to get telematics into the cloud I actually jumped a little bit the first is for security alerts of course security is the most important so you can get telematics or behaviors from your device up into the cloud and then use AWS IoT device defender to see if there's any challenges with your device then you can use um, Kinesis uh, Data Firehose to gather data to provide additional data for your model built and automatically re rebuild your model. And then, of course, there's um, there's feature changes so you can see like how the device is being used, if there's anything that can be optimized. Once you get those things into your analytics system, then you're able to make proper judgment on what you should be working on next. Then once those changes are done, you can create a system update and then deliver that back down to the device, ultimately using fleet management. So that's really the high level for constructing an OTA. On the next part, what we want to show is, well, how do we actually get that, get that done? So code build again is the way that you would actually create a system update and stage that again into Amazon S3, which is fronted by CloudFront globally. The bottom part there is just showing um, what you do for on-prem testing, but the top part is, uh, the left side is for the on-prem testing, but the right side is really the global distribution of those OTA updates. And customers are doing this today on a global basis. So, um, so it's really becoming a standard practice, but how we actually do that with Yocto project um, it's it's something that we've been curating quite a bit within the Meta AWS CI project, and I'll give you a link to that in a little bit. Okay, so what would you do for your next steps? Your next steps is well, check out the Meta AWS project, right? So, the, all of these QR codes will give you links to content, which will help you get started. So, on the left hand side, um, on the on the top is the QR code for the Meta AWS project itself. On the lower left-hand side is the QR code for Meta AWS CI, which will help you get started with doing distribution builds up in the AWS cloud, which is super fun. And then from a content perspective, something that we've just started building out is this IoT Builders theme. So we have a YouTube channel, which you can go and join. We'll be putting more embedded Linux content there soon. And on the lower right-hand side is a QR code for our dev.2 landing page, which we will also have more content there. Actually, there's on, on both of those on the right-hand side, you'll see you'll be able to see Nenad Ilyich's um, work that he was doing on how to debug C++ green, green grass components. So you'll start to see some more, some really um, nice content for developers to do your Yocto project work. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. Um, please get in contact with me. You can either get me on LinkedIn or say hi on Twitter and um, keep on rocking with the Yocto project. I love it. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.